this curve. And whenever the data model changes, uh, and sorry, when an item is added, I'm going to add that, uh, sorry, to play that animation so it will come up smoothly. Uh, same for the weather page. The weather page is where you saw all the uh, weather uh, history items. Uh, I attached the same uh, transition to that. Uh, takes one second and it makes it visible. So I'm going to build that and load it on the device and show you the difference. So can you see that? When it came up, it was just much smoother now. And I'll drill down to another city to show you. See this one too, the list for the continent? I it now comes up smoothly. And when I drill down to a city, same thing, it's smooth now. And that was like a few lines of code, super easy. I applied it as well to the error message, which I have a problematic city here. And see, it was smooth. It came up smoothly. And just with a few lines of code. Um, I, I put a link there to the list of stock curves that you get. I use the cubic in, I believe, or cubic out. Uh, my colleague here, Gary, <laughs> suggests that we use the ease in curve. Is that what you said? Quadratic out. Quadratic out. <laughs> um, yeah, I, well, yeah. What do you, we used to play a lot with animation curves, and there was a lot of different, there's a lot of different choices and stuff that you can use. The re I believe, and there's intrinsic, mat, implicit animations in Cascades. Um, to me, the quadratic out, it, like Dan was saying too, there's some cases where you want to use a very specific animation, but I like, what I like about quadratic out is that, one is that it matches physics, because like, it's the same Newtonian physics, so it's like a page got thrown in, it, it matches that physical model. Um, the other advantage, the other neat thing about like a quadratic out is that it comes in very fast and then it slows down, which means that halfway time, halfway when the animation's done, it's more than halfway complete. So it comes in very quick. You can see the content quickly, quickly and then it slows down at the end, which means that you can actually start to see what content is there when you're appearing new content. So it actually a lot of the implicit animations, a lot of the the transitions, if you click on an email and you open it, it uses that quadratic animation and, and it has that visual effect. It's actually a lot faster because you can actually start to see the content and f figure it out um, before the animation's even complete, which is pretty cool, I think. And you just mentioned uh, implicit <coughs> animations. This is something I forgot to mention that uh, everything, almost everything, all the properties in Cascades are animated by default. They have a default transition. In this case, uh, if I would have s just simply set the uh, opacity from zero to one uh, with one line of code, it would have transitioned it smoothly with the curve that you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, in my case, I found that it was a bit too slow. That's why I made my own uh, explicit animation and I set it to one second. I, th I thought, and it's especially for this uh, example to show you, it was much easier to do that. But by default, it it'll, do it by, it'll do it on its own. It's sort of a good example. If you don't, if you want to put the level of design in detail and the animation curves and how things appear at that subtle level of detail, you can do it. Or you can leave it to somebody who's already tuned it for the implicit animations and put a lot of thought into those curves and how things should appear. So. The other thing I wanted to show you is the info page. So with a few lines of code, I created an animated sky. See? So I'll show you the code for that. It's quite simple. So what I did is I got rid, first of all, I got rid of the old cloud that was there. It was a static image. I added, I wrapped four new clouds, four image views in a container and I positioned them, um, I, I, I changed them, the, the tr translated them on the y-axis just so they are a bit uh, 
one above the other. And I attached a series of animations, transitions here, uh, translate transitions for each of the clouds. So, and what I said is I want to move the, them on the x-axis from like cloud A, for example, from negative 455 to 1300. And similarly for the other ones. Uh, and I made all the durations a bit different, the curves as well. Uh, so they appear like they're moving with the wind. Uh, and I wrap, wrap them all in a parallel animation, which uh, just starts them all at the same time and then lets them do their thing. Uh, and I set the repeat count forever. So that just keeps the sky moving. And when the creation, when the, uh, sorry, the page loads, I play the animation and that's it. That was just this block of code doing all of that. That's it. That's my. So we'd like to open it up to questions. If anyone has a question, we have a um, floor mic so that it gets captured on the audio feed. And I gotta say that speaking to Dan and Megan preparing for this, uh, Megan and Dan have a whole lot more experience than may have come through. This is it's a large topic, so they've been dealing with a lot of the practical issues and doing design and everything else. So if there's any questions or things you want to ask now or afterwards. Um, be good opportunity to. Feel free to stop us in the hall <laughs> if you have a, a uh, you know, a design problem that's uh, sort of nagging you or just want to run some uh, some stuff by. Often, often when you're working on a design problem, the best, the most common answer is, well, it depends. And so every, every implementation of a design pattern has to consider the context, has to consider uh, the user goals, and needs to be sort of massaged to fit your particular question. We do have a question. Hello, I don't know if, I, if I'm on the <laughs> same topic with you because we're doing games mostly. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I just wanted to ask a technical question of how do you handle uh, animations that use transparency like shadow drops, etc. So to optimize on these devices, because we have some, in some cases we have some, I don't know, maybe cus custom transitions from screen to screen and all have to be different depending on the theme of the game, of course. And we sometimes experience uh, performance issues, so we have some methods of solving them, but uh, I just wanted to ask how, how maybe you do it, if you have some experience with it. Yeah, that would be a fun question for me to answer, actually. Um, I, can I ask, are you using OpenGL? We're using cross-platform development with uh, Unity and uh, Adobe Air. Okay. So while I'm not exper I, I don't know about the application framework. I do, and I, I don't know what I'd love to ask you about. Like, what specific problem, performance problems you're having? Like, is it stutter? Yeah. Okay. Actually, <laughs> actually. So I'll speak generally too. I get, I, and this would be a good opportunity. I had the opportunity to work directly with the. the we can plug it in if we want to show it. It doesn't mind. But. Uh, Okay. Not generic ones, uh, with, uh, I'll speak to it just in general terms. Uh, like just to, uh, it's amazing to me how much, actually what some amazing work went into Cascades in order to make those animations smooth. Um, a lot of the, the, the trick to making anything smooth, liquid graphics, I'm gonna be speaking on this a little bit more in another session at 12.45, but you've got, it, the, the <coughs> screen updates 60 times per second. So in order to be smooth, you have to draw once and only once to that LCD in order to appear smooth. But not only that, your animation timers need to be synchronized to that V-Sync. Because when you're using high resolution content, um, and when something is moving, if you miss even a single frame at 60 frames per second, the user notices. So a lot of times that uh, software developers, OpenGL platforms, they speak in terms of frames per second. 
I personally kind of hate that, and I don't think it adds a lot of information. The reality is you need to hit every frame. It's pass-fail. You need to hit 60 frames per second, uh, or if you miss, it shows up as a stutter. Um, in order to hit 60 frames per second, it's also, it varies in terms of heat, too. So you, if you sync yourself to the graphics pipeline and sync your animation timers to that graphics pipeline as well, and then make sure that your CPU operates within 16 milliseconds within its budget, and the GPU operations happen within their budget, um, and then composite composition of multiple overlapping windows also are within their budget, then everything is smooth. Um, Cascades does that very well. Um, and not only that, it's been optimized. Early in the development cycle, we, we did have some issues with stutter um, for complicated scenes. But uh, actually, in preparing for this conference, I got to say, we, for a lab that we're doing this afternoon, we attempted to reproduce a scenario that actually caused stutter, a performance problems in a Cascades list. Um, and it took four or five people to working together to try to find a scenario that could make it stutter and make it stall. Um, so I know that like, that's, that's sort of an overview of how Cascades ensures that its animations are smooth. That's also the level of detail you need to put into your animations in order to make them smooth. A lot of frameworks, a lot of OpenGL platforms, they'll know this and they'll do this. They'll be synced to the, to the graphics pipeline and perform that really well. If you're having issues with stutter, it's a matter of making sure all those things are happening um, and then you'll be able to eliminate that. But that's just an overview. I don't know if we can talk afterwards if you'd like to. Hi. Hi. I'd like to ask <coughs> the designer something. Mm -hmm. um, imagine a situation where uh, a developer develops the whole application without considering, without you know, any knowledge or any input. <laughs> from I can't person. imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, developing myself. Um, so what would be like the main mistakes or what would be the main points that could be improved uh, by the developer uh, himself without, you know, any uh, input from a professional uh, designer? Like, what, what, what are the major mistakes that the developers do? I love that question. <laughs> I'll let Megan answer. The beauty with, uh, um. the beauty with Cascades is that uh, they, they gave you a direction and for the flow and the tabs and everything, you get all that for free. Yeah, so I guess my answer is, if you're designing for the BB10, um, the good news is, is a lot of little things. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, um, it's for the enterprises, the application. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so some of the little things that make for a, a nice, rich, sort of fluid user experience, Cascades has already 